I had been taught that you could renew the mind by just saying the scripture over and over and over and over, scriptures on healing. Suddenly, it'll drop down and your, your natural mind will go, okay, now I believe it. I've been brainwashed. I believe it. But I did that for 30 years and I still had problems. I was kind of in that rut too, like reading all those Bible verses. I'm like, yeah. okay, this is what the scripture says. I can read it forward and backward, upside down, but there's still a disconnect somewhere. While I saw that scripture before my eyes, the Lord gave me an instantaneous revelation of seeing it in a whole different light. And I thought, if this is true, I I've got to give it a test and if it's true i've got to show others this flesh and blood mind it's hostile towards god it says it's not subject to the laws of god and it says neither can it be you can't make it bow its needed word of god what's up everybody so in this video we're just going to go through some simple very effective tips tax whatever you want to call it when it comes to healing i am with my special guest here mr tom loud tom loud go ahead and just introduce yourself tell a little bit about yourself so that everybody knows who you are yeah i'm tom loud i'm pastor of shoreline full gospel fellowship in seattle washington i have a youtube channel where uh, i teach people how to go out and do marketplace ministry pray for the sick see miracles at their own hands and so uh it's good to be here today with luke and uh, I hope that the tips that we give are very helpful. Yeah, and so Tom Loud actually came and, and we had a whole conference. It was called By His Stripes and he basically taught us Friday, Saturday, and Sunday and showed us how to pray for the sick, how to pray for those who had pain. And man, how encouraging it was, Tom. Like everybody in the church was just so touched. Everybody realized what they already had, right? Just like you say, like everybody already has this. Whether you just got born again five minutes or, you, or you've been a Christian for, for 20 years, it doesn't matter. Everybody has the same Holy Spirit. No one has a small Holy Spirit a big Holy Spirit. We all have the same Holy Spirit. And uh, one of the biggest verses that you mention in your book, if you don't know, he has a book called Unlocking Kingdom Power, is a verse that says, greater works will you do. Could you quote the verse real quick? Well, Jesus talks about how not only will you do the works that I do, but greater works than these shall you do. And and uh, some people think, well, how can we do something greater than Jesus? And really that word greater is a thing that has to do with quantity. So if there's one Jesus in a, in a physical body walking around on earth, he can reach so many people within his lifespan. Right. But if everybody that's a Christian that has Holy Spirit in them is walking around doing the works of God, then there's going to be a whole lot more miracles. And boy, did we see miracles. We saw so many people healed in our church and just the amount of faith rose up, uh, the amount of legs that grew out, the amount of back pain and all types of pain that everybody had. Everybody was healed. It was absolutely amazing. So in this video, I'm going to title it The Moment I Learned Nothing from Tom Loud. <laughs> and so Tom Loud, if you could please just kind of explain what that means means when I say I learned nothing from you. <laughs> yeah, well, I have a video that uh, is called The Day I Learned Nothing from Pete Cabrera Jr. Yeah. And that's kind of where he's gotten this title from. And uh, years ago, um, 2014, 2014, um, my secretary was showing me a video and it was of this man named Pete Cabrera Jr. And I did not know who he was and he was not very well known at the time. But uh, he was operating at a very high level in, in the working of miracles and seeing many people people healed of, of extreme things, people healed of blindness, deafness, paralysis, uh, cancer, all kinds of things. And he wasn't doing this from a stage. It wasn't like, uh, you know, a big rally and everybody got together. He was just doing this on the streets. So I saw this man doing some things that looked a little beyond belief and it made me curious, is this guy for real? Is this stuff real? So finally, after badgering him over the internet for a while, he, he, he called me and we got to talk. And since then I've met Pete and Pete's a friend of mine and we've been out many times together and prayed for people. And I can tell you everything he was doing was legit. It was all real. And so what happened though, in the initial meeting of Pete and I is I saw him working these works, these miraculous works with relative ease and not sweating about it, not a whole lot of prayer. And uh, I wanted to know what his secret was. I wanted to know what was going on inside his head as he was praying for people, because he might say no words at all and they would get healed. He might say a few words. He might just point at them or various other things. And I was wondering, what are you thinking? What's your mindset when you're doing this healing? Yeah. Because I'm, I'm praying like you're praying and I'm not seeing results. And, and also, I maybe thought, I'm not seeing results because I don't have maybe the gift of healing. And then on one video, after seeing all these people ve uh, healed, Pete said, by the way, I don't have the gift of healing. So I thought, well, I've got to figure out what you're doing then. <laughs> so I badgered Pete on the internet. He please call me, please call me. One day he finally called me. And um, I said, okay, I've got you now. And I've got to ask you this question. Yeah. I saw this, for example, this one lady that you were praying for. 
and she was really messed up. Surgery didn't do any good at all. She could barely move her arm. And uh, you prayed for her, and uh, her arm moved better. And then you prayed for her a second time, but actually you kind of didn't pray for her. You just put your hand on her and looked at her. And then you said, test it out. And she was completely healed. So I said, in that time where you weren't saying anything, what were you thinking? And he said, well, actually, Tom, I wasn't thinking anything at all. And I said, what do you mean you weren't thinking anything? Weren't you like picturing, uh, like visualizing a finished work in her shoulder area, her arm? Yeah. He says, nope. I go, were you praying silently in the spirit, perhaps? He says, nope. He says, I was actually thinking nothing and I was feeling nothing. And I said, I, I don't understand. You're thinking nothing, you're feeling nothing, and yet she got healed. He said, that's right. I said, how do you explain that? He goes, I don't know, it just works. So I was very frustrated. I hung up the phone and was like, Lord, I thought I was going to get my answer, the secret to how to get this stuff to happen for me. Mm -hmm. And his answer was nothing. He said, I think nothing. And that didn't make sense to me. So as I hung up the phone and I was frustrated, I I, I, I said to the Lord, I said, this is really frustrating. I'm, I, I get, that answer was nothing. That answer was useless to me. It was worthless to me. So I don't get this. Why, why didn't I get an answer that was satisfactory? And then I had a revelation. I had a, a God moment. And what happened is I saw a scripture flash across my eyes, just floating in space. And it was a scripture that I've never meditated on in relationship to healing or anything. It was just this random scripture. Yeah. It was Romans 8, 7. And it says, for the carnal mind is enmity against God. It's not subject to the laws of God, neither can it be. And to break that down, it's saying the mind of the natural man in the flesh, this flesh and blood mind, it's hostile towards God, which is... A weird thing. Why is my mind hostile towards God? It says it's not subject to the laws of God. In other words, it won't bow its knee to the Word of God. And it says neither can it be. You can't make it bow its knee to the Word of God. While while I saw that scripture before my eyes, the Lord gave me an instantaneous revelation of seeing it in a whole different light. And the light that He showed me uh, was something that was very illuminating. And I thought. If this is true, I've got to give it a test. And if it's true, I've got to show others. So the light he gave me was this. He says, your natural mind, which everybody has, we were born with one. Even before you were born again, you had a natural mind. And it's of this natural world. And it's of a physical nature. And it understands things it can see, things that it can touch, things that make sense on paper. But it does not understand spiritual things at all. It's completely spiritually dead. Mm. So our natural mind can be hostile towards God because God, God asks it to do stuff that it cannot do. Like God's, comprehend, like it yeah. can't comprehend it. God says, I need you to believe in something you cannot see. And your natural mind goes, I, that's hard, show me. And God says, that's not how it works. We walk by faith, not by sight. So your natural mind gets frustrated, and this makes it a little bit angry, we'll say, a little bit hostile, saying, I, I can't do that. I, you've got to show me on paper. You've got to show me in the laboratory. That's You yeah. see scientists, all they're using is their natural mind. They say, I've got to see it in the laboratory. Yeah, show, show me, yeah show me the math. Right. Show me the math, uh, you know, show me the bottom line. So, and it says that the natural mind, <clears throat> it will not be subject to the word of God. In other words, it's not going to finally bow its knee and go, oh yeah, God, you're right. And I, I, I believe in what you said. The natural mind's going to always have a problem believing. And it says it's not subject to the law of God. It said, neither can it be. So in other words, um, I had been taught that you could renew the mind by just saying the scripture over and over and over and over, scriptures on healing, say them over and over and over. Suddenly it'll drop down and your, your natural mind will go, Okay, now I believe it. I've been brainwashed. I believe it. But I did that for 30 years and I still had problems. Yeah, and I was I was kind of in that rut too, like reading all those Bible verses. I'm like, yeah. okay, this is what the scripture says. I can read it forward and backward, upside down. Yeah. And it's like, okay, I know that this is what God wants for my life, but there's still a disconnect somewhere, you right. know? So what the Lord showed me in a moment was <clears throat> no matter how much you work on getting your natural mind on board, with belief in faith yeah. in things it cannot see it's never going to get on board and the lord showed me your natural mind is the obstacle to you flowing in the spirit so what i felt i understood in that moment was that i somehow have to take my natural mind that's saying you know i i don't i don't understand this how can this happen i don't see how this can work and just shutting it off and just allowing my spirit to work unhindered 
because my spirit believes in everything the Lord has said, because my spirit is one with his spirit, and I have the Holy Spirit within me, and the Holy Spirit bears witness to truth. So that part of me doesn't have a problem. My natural mind has a problem. Mm. So I need to isolate those two, because, you know, uh, Mark 11, 23 and 24 talks about that if you have faith like a mustard seed, you'll you'll pluck up this mountain, you'll say, be plucked up to a mountain and cast into the sea. And if you believe and do not doubt, nothing will be impossible to you. Whatever you say will come to pass. And so the problem is this. It says, if you believe and do not doubt. And that's the problem, is we believe and we doubt. We do Mm, both. That's so good. You believe with your spirit, but you doubt with your natural mind. So somehow you got to get the doubt out of the picture and then the belief will do its job. Wow. So the Lord showed me what I believed I had to do and I I had to test it before I shared it with anybody else. So I went out on the streets and I had never gone out on the streets and prayed for people. I had gone on the streets and witnessed to people but never prayed for healing. So first time ever. I believe I had a revelation. I've got to test it out. So I went out on the streets looking for somebody and I found a young lady. She's only in her 30s in front of a Dollar Tree store. And she was walking with a a walker like an old lady would use and she was barely walking at all. I knew something was wrong, obviously. So I went up to her and I said, excuse me, can you tell me exactly what's your issue here physically? And she said <clears throat> she had an early onset uh, osteoarthritis throughout her whole body. She had arthritis everywhere. And I said, are you in pain? She says, oh, I'm in extreme pain. And no matter what the doctors do, there's nothing they can do. I, uh, you know, they give me the drugs, but I'm still in pain. I said, what's your pain level? One through 10. She said, it's about an eight out of 10 all the time. Wow. And then I said stuff, which, you know, I wasn't lying as much as stuff was just coming out my mouth. And I go, did I say that? And I said to her, I said, well, I pray for people and God heals them. So you're going to be healed today. And I just, did I say that? Because it's wow. never happened ever <laughs> before. But I said it. And then she's like, oh, really? I said, yeah. Could I pray for you? God will take away all your pain. I couldn't believe I was saying that, but I said it. She goes, sure, go ahead. Pray for me. So I said, well, before I pray, why don't you, why don't you demonstrate to me what you can and can't do. And she demonstrated how she couldn't move very much. And she, uh, when she tried to touch her toes, she could only get her hands down to her knees. And then she was in agony. So I said, good enough. So now I'm going to pray for you. God's going to take your pain away. So I said, just relax and don't pray with me. Just receive my prayer. And then I engaged in speaking in faith just speaking to the problem about God, not to God about the problem. I was saying, Father, please heal this woman. I was saying, I speak to you arthritis and I command you to go right now. That's good. And I'll just take a pause there real quick because there's so many Christians that are like, oh Lord, please. And you're, and you're begging God to do something that he wants to do already. Like he wants to more than you want it. Yeah. You know, and so it's like we as Christians, we've been given authority. So when we say, please, God, can you hopefully, possibly, maybe if it be your will. And, and Jesus is saying, it is my will. I gave you authority. Yeah. You need to exercise that authority. Don't ask me. I gave it to you. You command the thing to go. That's right. good. Continue. Uh, in the book of Acts, after the, you know, baptism of the Holy Spirit happens in Acts chapter two, you follow the apostles um, their lives, what they're doing. Yeah. And you will see that they never pray to the Father to ask for healing. They use authority. Ooh. So at the gate called Beautiful, you know, Peter doesn't say, uh, Father, please heal this lame man. He says, from what I have within me, I'm going to give it to you, such as I have. Rise up and walk in the name of Jesus. He used authority. And that man stood up and walked. Wow. So we can use that kind of authority. So I spoke to the arthritis with faith. I said, arthritis, I'm commanding you to get out of this body right now. And I command all the pain to leave now. And when I said the word now, that was my point of like releasing the arrow from the bow or shooting the gun, pulling the trigger. Boom. At that point, I shut off my natural mind and said, just don't talk. Just be silent. Because normally after you pray like that, you say, be healed in Jesus name. Your mind starts to talk to you and says, what if it doesn't work? You know, you're going to look like a fool. Jesus will be disgraced. Oh, you know, it's going to look bad if it doesn't work. I didn't let any of that talk happen this time. Mm. I said, "Shh, I don't listen to you. I'm not listening to you. You're not going to have an effect here because I'm ignoring you. So natural mind says, yeah, but what if I, shh, but shh, I just was silent. And I just went to a place of peace after I said, pain leave now. I just kept my hand there and just went to this place of quietness. I didn't move a muscle. I didn't think a thing. I thought nothing. (laughs) You see, that's what Pete was saying without even realizing it. He thought nothing and it worked. That was the secret. Stop thinking. Just be quiet. So I thought nothing. And after a few moments, I took my hand off and I said, now touch your toes. And she couldn't touch her toes, she said in her mind. She says, I can't touch my toes. You know I can't touch my toes. And I said, came out my mouth, I said, you can now. And she reached down, touched her toes. She stood up. She was completely healed. She's healed to this day. All the pain was gone. All the arthritis was gone. Wow. She's never had a problem again. 
So the thing that I learned, the nothing that I learned, the nothing that Luke learned, Mm -hmm. is after praying with faith and authority, shut off the natural mind's thinking and think nothing. And I wasn't expecting to feel. Some people like, I got to feel the Holy Spirit. That's also a sense. We're not led by senses. We're led by faith. So I wasn't trying to feel anything. I wasn't trying to think anything. I was just trying to be quiet and let the Lord do his work. And it worked. And then after it worked, I was shocked. It's the first time I've ever seen anybody healed miraculously in an instant like that. So I figured I better try it again. Just make sure it still works, you know, that it works for everybody. Mm -hmm. And I tried it again and it worked. And now I've tried it thousands of times and it works. Yeah. So that's the key for many people. I found people that have gone through like the DHT with Curry Blake, and they've learned all the scriptures on healing. And they've been trained in everything to do with healing, but they're missing that one element. And Mm. once I teach them that element, it's on. And they could see the miracles happening. So you going back to that verse in Romans 8, you know, the mind is hostile towards God and neither can it conform to the things of God. So can we properly say that our mind is technically like an atheist? Yes. Your mind does not have the capability to comprehend or understand the things of the spirit. Mm. So it's easy for the devil, for example, to attack your natural mind because it doesn't even believe in the devil. So it's like, oh, okay, so I can run around. You don't even realize it's me. You think that thought's your thought. You think all those things, those nightmares you're having, you think that's you. And it's like, Mm. no, it just doesn't understand. There's a spirit behind that. Wow, that's good. And that was the nothing that I learned, guys. And so I literally watched those videos, his teachings on YouTube, and I said, I got to try this out myself. And so I started going out. And the moment that I started implementing that, thinking nothing, silencing my mind, just allowing words of faith to speak and to just shut it off, I immediately saw my healing percentage go up. You know, out of 10 people, six to seven people were getting healed, you know? And and Tom even talks about, he's not Jesus. We're None of us are Jesus, right? Um, You know, we don't see 100% healing all the time. But what if you were able to see 60 to 80% of the people, 70 to 80% of the people healed that you prayed for? You know, he kind of compared it to salvations. What if you preached the gospel to 10 people, but one person gave their life to the Lord? Are you going to say, oh, it was just a, it was a wasted day. It was a horrible day. You know, we only, only one person got saved. No, say right? We wouldn't say that when it came to salvation. So it's the same principle with healing. Okay. Let's just say you pray for 10 people and only one person gets healed. One person got healed. You know, it, it, don't, don't get so focused on the amount, but that the Holy Spirit's working. And as you continue to do it, continue to go fish, as Tom likes to say, you're going to start catching more fish. And that percentage is going to get higher and higher the more you're able to control and just silence the mind and speak words of faith as Jesus would have, right? Get up and walk, you know, just like Peter did. What I have, I give to you. Get up and walk, you know, and and everybody whom Jesus laid their hands on got healed. That was another cool thing is you don't necessarily have to say anything. The Bible says you will lay your hands on the sick and they will recover. It didn't say anything about praying. There's nothing wrong with praying. You can pray. But they said you just lay your hands on. So I remember I tried that. I was in a Publix parking lot. I went to go get some cinnamon rolls one day and this guy was on a moped and we happened to exit at the same time. I was leaving the parking lot and the Lord said, turn around and go pray for him and ask him if he has any pain. So I, I said, all right, listen, man, I, I know this is sound so weird, but uh, uh, do you have any pain in your body? He's like, do I? I have it everywhere. So I said, okay, you know, what would be the first place? My neck. And so he couldn't move his neck at all. He couldn't turn it, nothing like that. So then I said, okay, I'm going to just put my hand here and I'm just going to talk to you. I'm not going to even say a prayer. I'm just going to put my hand right there. So I said, okay, I'm going to take my hand off. I didn't pray. didn't say anything like spiritual. And then I said, okay, go ahead and check your neck. And he was like, whoa, freaking out. And then he starts like turning his head back and forth, like rocking it everywhere. And his neck had no pain in it. And it was at that moment, I was like, this is for real. Like, I didn't even say anything. I just laid my hands on him. And it's like, you can pray for people. You can lay your hands on people. The point is, is you have the Holy Spirit and whatever you release your faith for, God is going to back you up. So, you know, Tom takes business cards and he gives them to people and the business card after they touch it, they get healed. Or Tom uh, takes his shadow and puts the shadow over the part that hurts and that person gets healed. He didn't touch them. He didn't have to do anything. It's just what it was, whatever comes to his mind. It's the Holy Spirit is backing you up. He's for you. He's not against you. He's with you wherever you go. And if you want to display his power and his love in cool ways, God's going to back you up because he wants to make himself known to the people who don't know him, especially through healing. This nothing principle, right? In Romans chapter eight, learning how to quiet the mind real quick. How can they enter that uh, in their quiet time? I know that you have a little trick oh. and then we can end it on that. Yeah. So I want to bring up one other thing though, is that you've got to get to the point to worry when you're thinking and when you're processing information and you say, I I, you say the word I. I don't feel that da 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 da. Yeah. You know, or I feel like da da da. You've got to learn that there are two yous. Mm. There's the natural man and there's the spirit man. Yeah. 
And they're to use with two voices. And you got to start discerning the voice. Because, for example, if you're going to go and be with your brothers and sisters at church and praise God, your natural man says, I don't feel like getting out of bed. That's not your spirit talking. That's your natural man talking. <laughs> That's good. Your spirit says, I want to be with my brothers and sisters and praise God. Yeah. They're two different yous. And you got to decide who's in the driver's seat. Right. And there are two different mindsets. And that's why the Bible says to be doubly minded causes you to be unstable. It says, let not that man think he shall receive anything from the Lord. That's where you allow your natural mind and your spiritual mind to come and clash and, and you don't put one of them down. OK, you, wow. you let them both talk mm. and you end up canceling each other out. You don't get anywhere. You have to put the natural mind under subjection and let the spiritual man be in the driver's seat. Okay. Wow. So one of the ways to quiet the natural mind, an exercise that works for many people. It was very effective when yeah, he taught it at the church, by is, the way. Is this, you see, your natural mind is like everything else on this earth. It's subject to the sons of God's authority. So you could speak to it with authority. You could speak to your own natural mind and uh, you could try this. This works for 80 to 90% of the people to enter a place of rest that many people have never entered before. Mm -hmm. Like in your prayers, maybe you battle to get into a place of rest you could get into it instantly many times just by doing this one simple thing wow so i'll show you just try to do it with me right now on the camera okay just close your eyes and now you're going to speak with authority because you're a son of god or a daughter of god you're going to speak with authority to your natural mind so this is what we're going to say together say mind submit to my spirit mind submit to my spirit spirit take me to the father spirit take me to the father just shh Now, I'm going to snap you out of that for a minute. Wow. This was taught to me by a woman who said, Pastor Tom, I can't shut my mind off. It's always going. And the Lord gave her this, and she did it for the first time in her whole life. Her mind went silent. And she's like, peace, like I never felt. That'll bring you to a place of peace where the, the, the chatter stops. Yeah. And you're just in a place of peace. So I find that that's a very uh, valuable thing, too, when you're praying. You just say, you know, I just want to get out of all the chatter about you try to pray and you're trying to break through. And your, your mind starts thinking of all the stuff you got to do, the to-do list and all that. It's like, just shut up. You can just shut it up like that. Just say, mind, submit to my spirit. And your spirit, you might say, well, why don't you say submit to the Holy Spirit? Well, see, it's because of this. Mind, submit to my spirit because my spirit is joined to the Holy spirit we're one spirit and we're together yeah and we just want the mind to stay out of it for a little while because we just want to commune with god and i found it to be very effective and so have many other people mm. and so i did that and people in the church did that and they were like he asked what's the word that you felt and it was peace yeah. peace like your mind my mind was completely empty mm. and people just felt like an overwhelming sense of love and peace and it's just like it was so simple and so you apply that same principle to when you pray for people you pray for them say in jesus name you know pain leave or cancer leave or diabetes leave and the moment you say that like he said you're pulling a trigger or releasing the arrow you just tell your mind be quiet submit to the spirit and just allow the spirit to flow and then boom, you ask them to check it and praise God, they're healed. And so thank you so much, Tom. I know these are just a couple of nuggets that I know very much that people will uh, use in their everyday life and to impact other people as they evangelize. Thank you so much, Tom. I really thank appreciate you. it. Seriously, thank you. thank you for coming to West Palm Beach, Florida and my, teaching Blueprints Church. My privilege. Uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell for future videos, and we will see you in another video. Peace. All right, that'll perfect. Be, that'll be good, man. That'll be amazing. Yeah, that'll be good. You did a great job. Thank you, sir.